I don't want my you, my standout quality to be the fact that I'm doing something nobody else. I could go on stage and take a dump on the floor. Mm-hmm. And nobody else has done that before. But that doesn't make it good. And mm-hmm. I that's when I realized I was chasing being special. Not because that's but all of it. special who, and unique are one and the same. Make that the cold open of the episode. Scoot doo. Blabbity blue. Scoop D. Oh yeah! Right there? Right here. Really. I'll be here. <laughs> how do you feel about that? No obligation. Yeah, that's fine. That's how you usually do it, right? Some people are anti headphone. Some people think of it. Do you remember when we were kids and people didn't want to wear helmets because it wasn't cool? Yeah. I think people think of headphones as. Well, I can see it sometimes with the hair, but see. I just, I don't care right now. I need a lint roller, Jesus. We have to take your shoes off uh, lint roller merchandise. What? Oh my God. <laughs> it helps us in post, you know, to take it all off. That's what happens when you got two doggies. Yeah, take your time, this is great. Okay, that's about as good as it's gonna get. I did a uh, zoom in on the lint roller to make sure it was still in the blanket joke, and I unfocused you. So we need another half hour. Just Uh oh. This episode is sponsored by Helix. Helix, what's going on with you? (laughs) I just had the best sleep ever. I am so wide awake that I can't even remember my lines. Helix is offering up to $200 off all mattress orders and two free pillows by visiting helixsleep.com slash Tyso. That's, so I was wide awake before. Now I'm relaxed. I'm full. And by the way, I forgot this episode is brought to you by DoorDash. <laughs> Get 25% off and f- f- zero <laughs> delivery fees on your first order over $15. Just download the app DoorDash and enter the code TISO, T Y S O, and eat your balls off. Whoa, 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 whoa. Do I look really shiny? I can't tell. I don't see it. Okay. What, would, what would the shine be? What would that mean? I don't know. Sweaty. Oh. Sweaty. Because some people are shiny people. Well, shiny, yeah, just from like, just being, I guess. I think people do stuff. We'll put up a picture of Whitney Cummings, for example. Always a shine on her face. Is it time? Uh-oh. What did you put that in? <laughs> uh, it's just a thing I had. I didn't are you going to cr- drink out of that? <laughs> well, you know, I'll drink out of that. Do you want me to chew it? I didn't want to chew in your mouth, in your ear. Uh, oh, wait, you're not wearing headphones. Not yet. Okay. I'm just worried that it's going to fall off onto the rug. Okay, watch. Oh, you're just making choices, huh? <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Take Your Shoes Off. Uh, today, a lot of things are different. Uh, camera placement's different, so you might not see my face. Oh. Um, uh, we're doing a lot of chewing. Um, you know what we're going to do? Mm-hmm. We're going to... Um, <laughs> take out the sound of the chew and replace it with something. What could we replace it with? Mm. Give me a little run. Give me a quick little run. A little. Give me a one second uh, or something. Yeah, and we'll replace it with that. <laughs> good. <Is> that- <laughs> How are your levels? They're pretty good. I could raise you up a little. You raise me up. Okay. <laughs> All right. Hello. Hi. Hi. All right. Thanks for coming over. Gosh, this is great. It's been like years in the making. I don't know if you remember, but I remember we met once. Yeah. That's distracting me a little bit. What, this? It's, and you're doing nothing wrong, and it's just I made a decision. This thing? Yeah, just put it... Uh, on this? Uh, not on the floor, but on... Yeah, on the, r- r- the wood. That's what that word is. Mm-hmm, on the wood. Thank you. Um, do you remember that we met? Was it at room five? Cool. I do. Yeah, you did a show with uh, uh, Scoot Doo's uh, theme song writer, Casey Abrams. <laughs> yes. And uh, it's my podcast theme song. Oh, yeah. I listened to it on the way here, actually. Oh, research? Yeah. Oh, I'll remember what I was saying. What, what, what episode did you listen to? And what'd you learn? Wait, no, no. I looked up the theme song. Oh, yeah. I mean, I've watched a bunch of yours. Like, it's amazing what you're doing with so many different people. Thanks. 
But aside from that, I was like, I don't quite think I've heard this theme song. Had no idea it was going to be. At some point, I would like to have Casey over with the bass, me on the keys, mm-hmm. and uh, you guys singing the theme song. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I met you after a show, and it's kind of like a corny thing to say to people, but I've been a fan of yours for years, and I mean that. So I say corny because I think people say you have people on fans listen to your music. Uh, since American Idol, I became a fan of you and Casey at the same time. Thanks. And it's been a while since American Idol, mm-hmm. and I don't know if that's something you don't want to talk about, but I have a lot of American <laughs> Idol questions. Um, you know, it is what it is. I... Okay. All right. Wow, <laughs> no, no, I didn't realize no. I, there was something digging up. Now I really want to. No, no, no. I, I, you know, for me, it's like we spend a lot of time to try and... So quick. What? It turned off? The, blan- uh, the blanket. Sometimes I knock it off on purpose. Um, Sometimes it happens f- on its own. I don't even know what just happened. I... Well, I do this a lot of times when we're talking about something that feels like it might be a blanketed statement, like what we're doing with American Idol. Um, so you're, you're... So that was a part of your act. Uh, yes. So I have to at least know, and we'll take all of this out. Turn the cameras off for a second. No one is watching this part. Um, the reason you don't love talking about it is because... No, it's not. I, I, what I was going to say is that we take, I um, let me just speak for myself. Okay. I've taken, you know, a lot of time to separate myself in many ways. That, With that said, I'm like 100% only have good things to say about it and the experience and um, because I have to because it's on contract. No, I'm just kidding. But kind of. Um, no. We'll put up the contract. <laughs> it's a... Uh, It's a great thing to talk about, but also I've kind of gotten to a great place where it doesn't have to be in the headline of an article, which is also awesome. Are you comfortable with us talking about even that part of it for a little bit? We can talk about anything. Okay. Uh, Did I just sign myself up? (laughs) I understand you got in a bar fight. Is this true? Oh, no. Um, I didn't do it. So I I don't want to put words in your mouth, but tell me if this makes sense. Yeah. Um. American Idol has a stigma? Yeah, totally. And what is that stigma? It's good and bad. Um, You know, I remember like at the right after the show ended, um, I was lucky enough to kind of knock down these walls and play Lollapalooza. And I was the first idol to do that. It's like there's just different things that you you really have to like separate yourself and and kind of and. For me, I'd like to go about it like the old Hollywood way of being like a triple threat. Like, do so many things, be so diverse that they can't pigeonhole you. Three things. Three, just three. Well, that's a triple threat. I know, you're right. Singing. Yeah. Acting. Yeah. And voiceover. And party. Voiceover. And party. Quadruple threat. Yeah. Um, So, Lollapalooza is something that is, what, cooler than... uh, Listen, American Isle is fantastic. I've talked about it many times, a big fan. But the reality of it, it's what? Is it cooler than American Idol? American Idol is what? Um, I Not in my opinion. I think that it just depends on what scene, you know, uh, is feeling that way. But that being said, that was 10 years ago. And mm-hmm. I feel like that stigma has also shifted because now there's a million other shows that are trying to be just like yeah. Idol. And people are kind of, I don't know, they're more all about it, I feel. Like they, that doesn't matter as much anymore. I think the comparable for that would be something like, um, which also I'm a big fan of, uh, we just had Howie Mandel on, who does Mm. America's Got Talent, and comedians going on AGT, Mm -hmm. where they feel like that's not the coolest stage for comedy. Um, Right. But... It's It's like JT, Christina, and Britney doing Mickey Mouse Club. You know, like, in a way, like, everybody's gotta start somewhere, or star search. Like, there's all of these things that people have come from that... You don't even remember until you look them up a lot of the time. Right. Um, it's another stepping stone. But again, like I personally, I would love to be like a judge someday. Like I, I love the show and I still watch. Oh. Like it's it's something that, um, you know, I definitely like feel is a part of me. Like it's, it's you know, some of my roots for sure. Why do you think it's changed? Because I, I agree and I have my take on it, but I'd like to hear yours. Like, change as far as... Like I was saying, like comedians who go on AGT are for, go from having problems getting spots to being a touring headliner overnight. And they're just as funny as they were. They just got that exposure. But there was this, and still might be this built in like judgment of, yeah, you had to go through this machine, Mm -hmm. um, which I, I feel has shifted. Mm -hmm. Uh, 
but what is your take? Why do you think it might be different now? And if you weren't on American Idol before, if, if you were to do it again, but you're not where you were then, would you do it? Yeah. No, I don't believe in regrets at all. Like, I really don't. It's funny to think that, like, you are getting judged in front of millions of people, and then afterwards, the real judgment comes, and then you have to, like, continue to explain... What's the real judgment? ...who you are to people over and over and over, uh, which is funny because, you know, we did that on the show, like, for our job. Like, we were just standing there getting whatever critiqued and um it's kind of this interesting you know thing that we just carry around that's kind of like you know comical at times <laughs> because it never it never ends that kind of you you're judged on the show and now you're judged for being on the show and is that what you mean by the real judgment yeah yeah i guess but um right. but again it's it's all it just depends on who that person who that project is and um like for me i just i would love to open for somebody like Cage the Elephant. I don't know if that's something that would inhibit me. You. What? Ladies and gentlemen, um, <laughs> Haley Reinhardt. I'm sorry, I meant to say, uh, this is the beginning of the podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, I have a surprise for you, Haley Reinhardt. <laughs> um, make that the cold open of the episode. I'm sorry to get your hopes up. Please don't tell me there's a caged elephant in your house. Somewhere. No. Okay. No, because uh, on this podcast, it makes people <laughs> uncomfortable, but we like to acknowledge all of the elephants in the room. <laughs> Hi, I'm Rick Glassman, and welcome to another episode of Take Your Shoes Off. Pick one of the openings. We're going to use one of these as one of our intros, uh, and then we'll cut back. Haley, Haley? That's me. Haley, uh, how would you describe you in seven words? Um, you don't have to use all seven. Okay. But it has to be a sentence. It can't be a list of words. Uh, so if there were like you know, two adjectives, you'd have to like, I am, you know, you'd have to get there. Can you, what about names of other people that could sure, but you have describe? To, I am like what, you know, you just burned three. Okay. I guess you could say I'm, you get it. You get the rules. It's so seven words. Yeah. yeah. I am, or how about I'm like. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Smart. Elaine Bennis. Lucille Ball. Six. Fun. Well, what you could do is because there's only two people, instead of making a comma, you could have just... And. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting that you're explaining your <clears throat> musical prowess, I'm assuming, uh, as uh, comedians. Oh, yeah. I wasn't even thinking music. I was just thinking as a person. Is that what you meant? Uh, I meant as an artist. Oh. I was thinking as an artist. Okay. Um, is it different as an artist than as a person? Uh, Yeah. Is that cultivated? Is that a choice? Um, well, yeah, it's like I, I'm, I mean, I can be cheeky and stuff mm. in my music and satirical and, you know, have fun, play on words. I like all of that, but it's not going to be as like comical as me in my daily life that nobody sees when I'm living full on Seinfeld episodes in my daily life. <laughs> you uh, have a, you said cheeky, you kind of have like a, I'm a woman kind of vibe about you as a performer. Do, Thank you. Do you connect to that? Yeah. And then you're saying outside of that, you're uh, eating Tootsie Rolls off a of factor, line factory and you're, you know, not a good dancer. I was trying to think of an Elaine thing. Um, the first one, yes. I was stuffing a banana in my mouth and then I tried to throw it out the window because it was biodegradable and then it like slapped me back in the face. Like that's just, you know, it's just a normal day. Are you making a conscious choice to be kind of like, hey, look at me. I'm a, you know, because in your real life, you're like, I don't know how to throw bananas away. Um, I think, you know, people talk about like alter egos and stuff. I think there's so many different levels and parts of us. And, you know, um, when I get on stage, like I have messages to send out to the crowd and to Give me like, an example. Well, specifically what you're talking about, like being, you know, a woman and like confident in her stance, I want to emanate that to younger women, like specifically, and just like the younger generation of like, you know, have an opinion, still be open to everything, be powerful, know your power, manifest everything. Like there's so many things I believe in and it, it's just like a lot of, you know, people that have some, I don't know, 
wasted potential, I'd say. And I, I want to unlock certain things in people. And if I can be strong, then hopefully it gives them some confidence as well. Ladies and gentlemen, the Caged Elephants. What was her name? <laughs> Cage the Elephant. What, is it, what was the band? Cage the Elephant. Cage the Elephant. Do you guys, I've never heard of Cage the Elephant. What? Do you know Cage the Elephant? Comment your favorite song. Uh, now, I don't want to sound like an old curmudgeon, okay? So, but yeah. sometimes... You said that you want to uh, help inspire the younger generations to have opinions. Don't, do you feel that they maybe have too many opinions as it is? Speak on that in um, seven words. <laughs> about seven. Um, no, you're right. There's a lot of, I think rather than opinions, what I truly mean is like to channel the core of who they are and be real about here's, it. Here's where, here's where, listen, some people might be like, Rick's too tough. Mm -hmm. Rick, sometimes they think I'm a little too tough. But wouldn't that mean that you would go on stage as this Elaine Bennis? I do. I do banter. I'm still that person in between, but you're talking musically as opposed to talking. We'll cut to a clip. Oh, for I, I can, I can't help falling in love with you. Five, six, seven, eight. I can't help in love with you. And we're back. Uh, brilliant. Brilliant joke <laughs> that we could just cut to. Um, you're not as... I'm going to compare... I'm going to talk about Casey for a second because I know Casey and I met you guys digitally for the first time. And... Uh, Right. On that season, what was it, 10? Mm -hmm. um, you were the two that I was just like a really big fan of. Um, he, he makes his, his uh, at least on social media, very jokey. Mm -hmm. um, that sounded judgmental. It's not at all. I mean, I'm a, no, I, no, have, no. I have cartoon penises everywhere. I've been encouraging that for him for, since day one. And it is who he is. Because we need more of that. We need more, what, what, goofy stuff like that? Yeah, just like, you know, the Weird Al Yankovic slash Jack Black slash uh, Bobby McFerrin. That's what I describe him as, like, those three. Who's Bobby McFerrin? I know Bobby McFerrin. Boop, 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 boop. He does all the, like, vocal cool things. Don't worry, be happy. Don't worry. Um, you, uh, I've never seen that from you, but you're ma naming two of probably the most iconic comedians, uh, comedians, <laughs> Is it, isn't it kind of... Shitty to change to change it to the comedian day. act. Are you a singtress or a singer? You know I what I like mean? songstress, but I'm not offended if you call me a singer or a singer. What would your goofy thing be? Because you're just like so soulful and like I, I can't. I want to put up. I'm sure people already know your music, but also I have an audience that might not know it yet, and I can't put your music up because then Daddy doesn't get paid. <laughs> So I, I mean, we'll put links and stuff, but Thanks. like, she's, I mean, I'm such a fan. She's so good. It's so not goofy at all to me. So wh yeah. what, what does that look like? Like, do you have an interest in doing like a one woman show or something that you're, that, that has a more of a narrative than just the song itself? Does that make sense? Yeah, sure. I mean, um, I'm very much into the old and the golden age of music and, and, you know, back in the day with like the Cher and Sonny yeah. and Cher show, like that kind of stuff really speaks to me. Um, Carol Burn Burnett, like doing like a variety show of sorts would be super cool. It's like, there's a, there's a time to be serious. There's a time to be funny. Um, I think that when you come, like if you come to a show of mine in the future, I'm I am as serious as I want to be when I'm performing these songs, but that banter in between is this, I don't plan anything. It's just kind of the happenings that are, um, you know, silly and dry humor and just things that. <laughs> I'm so sorry. It's my dentist. Um, you know what? Uh, I was going to say, you really should. I'm sorry about this. You should get a dentist. Hello. Mm -hmm. Hi, may I speak with uh, Rick? Yeah. One second. Rick. Hello, this is Rick. I want to poop you. I do this bit where I press mute. 
Uh, well, my friend had a question. One second. Do they have the salted caramel kind? Oh, right. Do you guys have the uh, salted caramel chip, the one that tastes like my dick? They only have that in pipes right now. Don't worry. I need five of them. I love ice cream just as much as I love sucking pits. Good. Maybe I that. Great. Thank you so much, man. And have a spooky Halloween. Okay, bye. Put it on, my I was actually calling to confirm your appointment. Is this for the penis reduction? That sounds good. Okay, so we'll see you tomorrow. All right, have a good one. Thank I peed my. Thank you so much. Bye. Thanks. I, I panicked on that. I, I, it's a bit that you know people know they love. I do it on Instagram, but I got I got a little in my head because I have a female over and I'm doing penis jokes and there's nothing wrong with a penis joke. One of my best friends is a penis joke, but I did feel like oh and then it's two women and I'm um, and I just and I then I got into poop. So edit that to make great. me funnier. It was great. I've never seen that in real life. It's, it's such a good game. That's fun. And I, you're pressing mute each time? I press mute every time, and sometimes... It's an accident? No, never once. Mm -hmm. I, go, I, go, I go hard. <laughs> and sometimes it's like, it's, it's like, ooh. <laughs> and people always say, because you, know, you do it in front of people, you get a laugh, you do what you can. Yeah. And like, that's going to backfire, Rick. And I got to say, 100 out of 100 times, I press mute at the right time, people laugh. Yeah. It's, it's fail safe. I trust it. I mean, even if you didn't, that'd be great too. Thank you. Um, so much. <laughs> so we're talking about there's a time and a place for comedy. Um, for example, interrupting somebody's sincere story to do a dentist bit. Yeah. Uh, and uh, one woman show, Carol Burnett. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Right, well, thank you so much for coming. No, I'm just kidding. Good to see you. Can I fill this up? Yeah. Okay. Um, what it happened to you? Is your thumb okay? You're going to think it's really tacky, and I'd rather not tell you, but I will if you ask me <laughs> you one more time. You have a pen in there. Uh, I've been a little depressed, okay. and I've been in a mood. And uh, I was, I've heard that if you put on a smile, it makes you happier. But I have TMJ disorder. That's why I answered the dentist's call right away. And I can't keep forcing that. So I thought as a trial, if I maybe just force myself to, you know... Give Are a you thumbs kidding? up. Yes, I, I am. I sprained my thumb playing basketball. <laughs> um, we'll be right back after I fill up my coffee. So make the right choice and visit Marshall Carpet One and Rug Gallery. And we promise, with more than 50 years as a family owned business, we've got you covered! That's Marshall Rug Gallery. Um, it's my father's area rug store. We advertise a lot on the podcast. Oh, fun. Oh, it's lovely. I don't know if you could see it with all your lint and hair that you've been putting on the oh, floor recently. Oh, my goodness. Two little doggies. That's my thing. Would you ever come... Uh, I, I do a lot of musical stuff on this podcast because I love music. And I want to be that, but I can't. And... Uh, I've been having people come over and like doing performances. Some of them are ironic. Some of them are real. Mm. No obligations, but I want to plant the seed. Would you come do sometime a performance? Yeah. Just like... Oh, you've been here. Oh, okay. Right. I left... I left my phone on just so I could let that person in for a package. Phone's off. Oh, okay. Um, Busy man. What's that? Busy man. I get a meal delivery service. All right. of the meals? Half. Is it the Hello Fresh thing? Hello Fresh and Green Chef are fantastic. They're sponsors of the show. We love them. Oh, didn't even know that. I keep setting you up. Uh, and I do use them. And that's the truth. Wow. But that you have to cook. Right. And, and that's not fun. I do that a, I probably I do that a few times a month. Yeah. But I, I like to have in my fridge just I get I get food anxiety. Like I don't know what, what I'm allowed to eat. Mm. Do you connect to this at all? Um, I mean, like you don't know what to choose, and you need it now. I, I don't think I could have explained it better. Yeah, I, there's so many foods I can't eat. Everything upsets me. Um, no, gluten and and meat and sugar and all this stuff, and yeah. I don't know how to do it. Yeah. So I have a fridge filled with whatever. So shout out to blah blah blah. You drink a lot of coffee, huh? I was making a joke about the thumb up thing. <laughs> yes. But for the past <laughs> little bit, I have been. I think it's technically self-medicating with coffee. Yo, every, everybody's got to do something right now. Stuff's weird. 
you seem just unaffected by life. <laughs> I felt that way before I met you, and I, I'm just convinced even now. I don't know. I think I might thrive in chaos, actually. Um, your parents are kind of like, as my mom would say about herself, hippity dippity. Is that fair? Um, I mean, it sounds that way on paper. Like they're very, they're very rooted individuals, but they have a lot of like street smarts coming from Chicago and playing in the, their band for like forty five years together and a bunch of other bands. So they they're very savvy and um, you know hippie by nature, I guess, and the fact that they they grew up through these you know cool times that I wish I did. I'm still living vicariously through them. But yeah, I mean, they're not too like too out there. They're very, my mom is like, they're both just very smart and talented people I've learned so much from, and I still do. Is Hippie by Nature their, their uh, hip hop band? band? Name? <laughs> uh, you played with them and uh, uh, I read this, so you never know if it's true, but you were playing with them when you were three. Is that real or did you just come on stage at a young age? That was like the first time that they'd literally been holding me up and I would sing like the sha la la's and from brown eyed girl with them like at their shows like that was the that was the beginning and um probably like my ninth birthday performing at a tattoo convention like an international one was like the the big thing for me that i'll always remember on my birthday golden birthday nine 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 shout out to dreamcast the day dreamcast came out oh yeah you were probably too young i was nine uh, but uh yeah, it was the first system that connected to the internet. Oh, no. And now... I don't want to be a part of that. Listen, here's where the world is now. <laughs> no, I, I was the other the, the other thing on the other end of it. So it's like, you know, duality. You got to have that. And then you got to have the little spiritual fairy child that comes in and is like, but wait, we also need the other stuff, aka analog. So you're like the fairy in Zelda. Sure. Um, do you remember being on stage at three? Well, there's a picture that helps to take me there. Put it up if you could send it to me. Yeah, I'll try. Uh, does what does that mean? I mean, when I guess when parents are police officers, their kids are police officers. <laughs> uh, that happens with doctors, and that happens with musicians. I feel like. Yeah. Is it a coincidence? I Were mean, you born into it? Born into it, surely. Um, I've. I mean, I definitely, like, my parents were like, we're not forcing you to do this. I was like, no, I already know what I want. And I want to do this. And I want to, like, keep on climbing that ladder and take it as far as I can. And, um, you know, they made a lot of sacrifices for their family and stayed at a certain level. Because I what look sacrifices? at them. Well, just, you know, to raise kids and to stay, you know, working in the Chicago land, like, circuit when as opposed to touring yeah as, a, as opposed to just yeah just going you know elsewhere and perhaps moving who knows to LA like I did and um I just know what they did and how far you know even farther they could have gone because of their talent alone um so in a way I'm like I pay homage to them and take it take it a step further you have a, a younger sister are you the oldest yeah she's a singer too were your parents touring before you were born? Um, they, were, they were playing full time before and during the pregnancy. I mean, they, they told me that I would like kick my mom in the stomach whenever they, the drummer hit the kick drum. Like it was like a thing. Because you guess. were angry. I liked it. Uh oh, okay. I think. <laughs> I sometimes when I'm with a new person uh, don't have the proper instincts of when because I, I try a lot of things mm -hmm. and I'm not upset with myself of a pun that I didn't make, but there was one I didn't, and it's I, too late. I feel like there was a time where I almost stopped because I knew there was a there was an opportunity. Was it around the Shirley? Bit? Uh, no, uh, I believed everything you were saying. Oh, um, put that makes sense. Yeah, good. I feel like that's a people. Will Surely make. it did. Uh, it was when you were talking about your parents paying homage. And listen, it's not going to work, all right? I get it. And that's why I didn't do it, but I'm pitching anyways. I thought there was something fun with talking about homage and opage, mm. because you're talking about both of them. Yes. So uh, what I think I want to try is we're going to go... Uh, uh, we're going to cut to... I feel like my mom and pa have uh, really made some sacrifices for us, so I feel like I'm paying homage... Oh, that's interesting. Would you also say you're paying opage? <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
my goodness. It's <laughs> a good one. That was a good one. So I love DoorDash. Just recently, I had to go out of town for a wedding. Brooklyn, magnificent, great food, had a great time. Got home about 10.30. You know, dinner at these weddings were eight, and you got to tumul and dance and everything. <laughs> Bad bottom line, we're hungry. It's quarter to 11. There's Teddy, his wife, Debbie and me. DoorDash, phone, watch. DoorDash. We ordered McDonald's. We got double cheeseburgers. We got fries. We got ice cream, and we got stomach aches. But it was all from DoorDash. Love them. <laughs> Why did you snap? <laughs> yeah, I, I was we got, we got more to do. <laughs> okay, more DoorDash. By the way, Teddy, just like our listeners for a limited time, got twenty five percent off and zero, zero delivery, delivery fees. fees on his first order of fifteen dollars or more by downloading the DoorDash app and entering the code Tyso. That's twenty five percent off, up to a ten dollar value. That's correct. Zero delivery fees on your first order by downloading the DoorDash app in the App Store and entering code TISO. To the listeners, don't forget. Don't forget. That's code TISO. <laughs> T-Y-S-O. Boom. For 25% off your first order with DoorDash. Subject to tape shows apply. Do it. Say subject to tape. Subject, subject to apply. <laughs> <laughs> I'm putting down the script for this, okay? Helix.com, where you get $200 off any mattress and two free pillows by entering code TISO. It's $200 off any mattress order. Yeah, plus two free pillows. So let me talk, all right? <laughs> okay, okay. I don't know if you've seen us previous commercials for Helix, but we actually have a Helix bed here in Ricky's room. I got to tell you something. I sleep in the two days a week because it's the best sleep around. I don't leave my wife all the time, but that Helix mattress is the best. If you had to put that into a jingle, Dad. Buy Helix. Have fun. <laughs> okay, Buy but, but, Helix. But use this. Feel good. <laughs> no, wait, wait. So, Rick, let's talk about the selling points of this mattress. What do you think? You go online, you take a two-minute sleep quiz. You right. find out what mattress is best for you. They got soft, they got medium, they got firm mattresses. They also have mattresses, if you sleep hot, that cool you down. And the mattress is good for spinal alignment. And we all know you Your need spinal, spinal alignment. alignment. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> this is a true story. I was browsing through my phone the other day on Google News, and I see an article 150 best items for Black Friday. And it was all broken down into categories. And the first category quotes Wired Magazine. And it says, number one mattress is the Helix mattress. Of all, they listed it like a zillion categories. Listen to this. Helix else. was awarded the number one best overall mattress of 2020 by GQ and Wired Magazine. And obviously, 2021 now as well. Absolutely. Okay. And they know what they're talking about, Wired Magazine. Go to helixsleep.com slash Tyso. And you could try it out for 100 nights. Risk free. Helix. Helix is offering up to two hundred dollars off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners at helix.com. Tyson. That's up to two hundred dollars off all mattress orders and two free pillows at helixsleep.com slash Tyso. Look at oh Ruffy's talking to the mic. Faffing snap. <laughs> hey guys, my name's Bill Murphy. We have the fifth season out now. It's our final season on Netflix of Epister Family. I'm playing Bill Burr as a kid. So basically I'm Bill Burr. <laughs> and uh, you guys can check it out now. It's on Netflix. We got season one, two, three, four, and five. Thanks guys. Peace. What would your parents be doing if they didn't have you two? Um, Musically. <laughs> well... It's interesting because my mom used to tour with um, like the biggest Elvis impersonator, which is kind of ironic. Most famous or the largest? <laughs> I think the option A. <laughs> he wasn't very popular, but he was 700 pounds. <laughs> he was huge, man. Mm -hmm. um, so she toured with him and got to go to some really cool places overseas. And she almost ended up coming to LA and staying here. And that would have meant that she wouldn't even be with my dad and we wouldn't have been born. So she made that decision because she was... <laughs> Opage, she was homesick so she came um home and um my dad had like another singer and she got like nodes had, or had something had another singer what do you mean like well, as a manager like in the band in the band that called midnight that they are still uh, the band leaders is, of the band is called called midnight the midnight band that's so the midnight band mm -hmm. so anywho 
it ended up where the singer had got like nodes on her throat or something and long story short mom kind of swooped in and saved the day um was your dad and nodes were they an item at, at any time i think so i think so and then she got nodes and she had to go. She and then your mom came in and your your and my mom was like, mom. actually, I don't know. I don't know if I can do this. Did they know then, each other yet? No. Uh like I think he like gave her a call and they were talking about it. My mom's like, Oh, that's kind of far for me. Like, I don't I don't know. I'm on the south side. I don't know. Leroy Brown. Yeah. Leroy Brown. South side of Chicago's <laughs> Le- where Leroy Brown's from. Oh wow. That um, song. Dun, 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 dun. So Anyway, she ended up seeing them play live and was like blown away. And she's with like, the, with the note singer who was temporarily playing. I don't even know. I don't think she was even there anymore at that time. Maybe it was like instrumental. My dad's like, you know, I hold him up there with the highest of the guitar players in the world, like the Stevie Ray Vaughan's, the Eric Clapton's. Like, I know he's my dad, but I don't care. Like that aside, he's still like one of the greatest mm-hmm. ever. So yeah, I'm sure that was enough for her to be like. Oh my gosh, I'm in. Swoon. Yeah. You play with your dad uh, on a show that doesn't, we won't talk about. <laughs> it's fine. Uh, but do you, uh, is that a common, is that something you do often? Yeah, I like to go home to Chicago and I'll have their band back me up. Um, the last thing I just did, I think, was um, at Chess Records. So I went with my dad and, you know, our heroes have performed and recorded in that studio um it's it's you know legendary over there so we've got to do some steve winwood uh, blind faith like can't find my way home and some some uh an original that reminds me of like if i wrote like a etta james type song because she i think she recorded at last there so it was really cool it's nice to just go home and still keep that you know whether it's somewhere legendary like chess records or like my backyard pub you know like it's it's really cool to still do all of that stuff Does playing at a place that did other things, has that novelty worn off to you or is it always cool to like, this is where they recorded at last or wherever else? It's always cool. Just like the mountains and the palm trees will always be cool to me here in LA. Uh, As an actor, I, on studio lots, there's a lot of times that it'll show like what things were filmed where you were we were recording like I did a mm. show that they that they filmed Casablanca at mm. and which is like the greatest movie of all time which I, I I'm you're supposed to say that I don't care I don't have anything to it I don't know I tried watching it recently on a plane and I was really bored and I didn't want to be I thought like this is gonna sweep me off my feet and then I we have to care tried. about that stuff and I do like I love like all the old I love so many old films. Maybe it was too much wine on the plane. I don't know, but I was falling asleep every two seconds. But I bring that up to still say, I'm not a fan of this movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, wow, this is still so cool. The history of it, like mm-hmm. going onto a studio lot. There's just something about it that you just feel like. Even when I'm going someplace to audition and I don't have a job, just being around that isn't it kind of? It's just like it's look, at, look at me. Yeah, and look, you're look keep, we're we're keeping of. it going. Yeah. yeah, I like that. I feel that a lot of times even before I know the history, and, and that's how I know that we're so interconnected and there's this, you know, this certain frequency that we're all we're all leveled up on if we want to be there, if we want to be able to, to tap in, tune into it, you know? What would you do if you could do any of it? Like, you want to be a quadruple threat, um, right? Because there was singing... I mean, I am. Acting, partying, and voiceover. Yeah. Right, but uh, what's the next step of what's that? What's the next level? Yeah. I mean, you being a judge on a talent show or having yeah. a Carol Burnett style show. Or- yeah, both of those. I want to do the James Bond theme song. Um, that feels realistic. I'd love to also make a cameo in it. Why not? Um, if they do an Austin Powers like four, I want to be in that. Uh, I'm Jamie Blondie. It, <laughs> um, I I gave so much direction. <laughs> I, I mean, this four seconds later is, has been 25 minutes, <laughs> and we ended up with that. I don't know who to be. I'm like, you need to be fucking crying and dramatic. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I can't force it. I can't fake the funk. Could you could you imp- impromptu as an improviser? Mm. We do scenes. Do you do that with your music? 
not in a comedy way. Like you hear music, you just not noises. I know you do a lot of scat and stuff. Yeah. Do you do that with lyrics? Um, sometimes or like fun things where like you like do a medley of different songs, you know, over a same beat, but you could find like a million songs that go over the same. Can we try it real quick? I'll give you a beat. Sure. Do I pull something up? I don't know. I'll just, I'll just give you a thing. Am I making it up? Uh, yeah. Or if you have it on anything, but do something to this, this melody that I've been working on for a few weeks. Oh, wow. It goes like this. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> oh boy oh no oh this is one of these episodes i like that okay all right hold on is there more to that yeah there's a lot more to that oh gosh i mean i'm too high whoa 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 yeah but dun a ba da da ba da 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 two all right, that's Haley Reinhardt with it. I'm doing you were the melody. Give us a beat, and then you gave yeah. me a melody. Do you want to be the melody? I can be no, the beat. I want you to be the melody. Okay. All right. Flirting. I'm the beat. <laughs> uh, so, uh, uh, the beat, what would a beat be? Just like a beatbox? Beat. I don't know how to beatbox. I'm going to try it. All right. That's pretty good. Mm-hmm. And we're here and I'm sitting down and I'm watching me because it looks like a clown. Yeah, he's drinking the coffee. Yeah, I'll take it from I think here. He's on crap. Oh! Teach me how to do a teach me how to do a run. Edit all that out. You can keep it in. You but I'm sorry to everybody. In. You better keep it in. Um I saw myself being a dad and like I didn't like it. You almost that uh whatever you were going to almost sounded like a Mark what's his name, Rebele or something? Mark Buble? No. Kev, Kevin Kevin's uh brother. Kevin is is uh Mark Michael's cousin. Rebele. The funny guy the one he does his own beats all the time. He's usually like shirtless. Oh, and, I like, think I know who you're talking about. People send me him. Yeah. I don't know who if that's who we're talking but I, about. It almost like you were almost there, but that oh Is he a good singer? Yeah, he's great. Tell me how to do this. He's so Be- free. I wanna I wanna do something with him too. You should too. People send me if it's the guy who wears robes a lot. Yes. Yeah. People always ha- say to have him on. I'll, maybe I'll reach out to him. Do you know him? No. I want to though. All right. Well, if I could get him on, that's where you'll come and you'll do some stuff. Uh, Great. Show me how to do something because okay. I have perfect pitch. Wow. Uh, some people tell me I do. I relatively. If anything, it's relative. But what isn't? <clears throat> Even yes. perfect pitch is relative. Right. Do you wanna... I feel like I know what I I know what I want to do, uh-huh. and it's really a bummer because it's not like oh I can't hear I could I, I you hear it and sometimes yeah that's how I feel with guitar. Could you play? No, that's right. what I'm saying. Right, my vocal cords have, have too I long of nails it. to be able to play. These are real. Are they? Yeah, this is a problem because I can't live without them. Well, you can. I can. Show me how to do this. Okay. What do you do to do? Because, I mean, I'm able to be here. 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 No, I'm not. I'm not able. But I have somewhat. You could do that. You just haven't even warmed up. What do I do? <clears throat> to warm up? Yeah. Um, sometimes it can sound like a mermaid or whale, like mating call or something. But, you know, you could do the like, ooh, ooh. Is that is that a mermaid or a whale? I prefer mermaid or siren, if you will. Ooh, ooh. Am and I then, doing it from the like from here like that? Yeah, and then ah. also you could fast forward five minutes if you're not into this. We'll put a little bar up. And then and then go to the next note. Ooh, it gets all the gunk out ooh, up in there. Ooh, ooh, ah. It's too high. Yeah, you don't have to start that high, but you get the idea. Just it scales. How do you know you can? I know I can't do it. I can't do it. I believe in you. But I feel like you got to right. Like if I got a vocal coat, there's got to be. If I could hear it, yeah, there's got to be a way. Because my answer to the question that I asked you of what would you like to be doing? Not my number one. I would love to do musicals. 
love. You'd be so good. I, and you don't have to be you caliber singer to do that kind of stuff. You know, you just have to be able to sing. And be cutthroat. I'm just kidding. What does that mean? <laughs> what does be cutthroat mean? I don't know. Just oh, like, like that like, industry, you know. Oh, are they are they trash? I'm just kidding. I'm just what, trying what to, is it? No, no. What, what? I'm just trying to put a little. No, no. I know, but you're inspired. Is is is, is it in a, the spokes? Is there something like are theater people like a little like? I don't know. I mean, right, I right. just remember high school, and I was like, I'm never doing this again. Man, a musical would be so fucking cool to do. If it was like Chicago or something, psh, I'd be on that real quick if I could get it. Like Roxy. Have you auditioned for stuff like that? No. There's a casting director who I've brought up on my podcast numerous times, Allison Jones. Shut up. Uh, she does a lot of comedies. Um, she did The Office, Curb Your Enthusiasm, 40 Year Old Virgin, The Golden Amazing. Girls, Fresh Prince. I mean, she's been, wow. for a very long time, she's been doing this. And uh, she has gotten me more jobs than everything else I've done total. Uh, outside of her. Different casting directors do different things and some casting directors you go in front of and it's it's like you're nervous or they don't put they don't create the most safe environment. It's for us to feel yeah. safe in anything, I guess, and be able to do it anyway, sure. But there's some environments that are better and with her, it always feels like I'm not auditioning for her. It feels like we're, I'm auditioning for the people behind the tape and she lets you do multiple takes mm -hmm. and she's like, that's not it. Let's do this. Come back, Go go do this figure this part out, you could come back. That's amazing. That type of thing. And it makes me feel really good. She's on your side. She's on your team. She's on my team. She wants the best out of you. And at worst case scenario, if it was a selfish thing, which it's not, she's on the side of like, she. all casting people should be on the side of, I'm trying to do my job the best. I'm trying to find people who are able to do it. Yeah. And take direction. Yes. Which I love. Like, give me direction. I don't mean like I just want to get in there and do my thing and that's enough. Give me direction, but like, don't like squash anything that that potential that could be. Would you ever do do your own production? Um, like, do a play or like I the second time I'm bringing this up, but like a one woman show. Yeah, I would really love that. I really, really would. I mean. I just did my first short film with um, Robert Rodriguez co-directing it um, for a song of mine. And that was... Is that not a music video? It's a music video, but the beginning and the end is a short film. And I've never done anything. I've always wanted to do something like this. But I get a little bit, you know, um, introspective, I guess, and a little, a little more meta with it. But it, I'm playing like three different characters and like a therapist who's me aka you, oh i saw you posting about that yeah. i know what it was yeah so it, it was like kind of you know i would i'm wanting to lean more into the this acting world and robert is obviously like a beast and i'm very lucky that he he was like going and filming mandalorian and he's like well i'm here in la you want to we just did we can be heroes which was a big hit and he's like we could do something for you and I just kind of told him my dreams, you know, so we made it happen. And um, is it out? Yeah, it's out. And it's really it's just fun to kind of play into these different roles. But really, it's it's all me. And I'm just basically like wanting people to see like you could be your own therapist. You could be your own cheerleader. You can be your own highest self, you know, um, highest state of consciousness, whatever you want. Like you could obviously get help from all of these different um, places and people as well. But knowing that you have those kind of um the accessibility within you i think is a just a neat kind of uh take is it on youtube yeah put a link in the description thanks what do Off you the what do you uh when you're singing how do you like i know what i'm i'm thinking i don't know how to articulate it like you're very passionate and also very performative not that they're mutually exclusive but like you're you're perf you're a performer right but it's also what you're what you are put that aside for a second I, i'm going to talk about that with me as a performer mm -hmm. i specifically with stand-up i a lot of my bits are written in a way where they're performance pieces mm -hmm. and to make it work you have to sell it and I, a lot of times, when I say I don't want to, uh, is the kinder way of saying it. I guess I can't. There's sometimes that I just, I, I, I don't have that. 
I don't have it today mm. or I don't have it for a full length of time. And part of the craft for me is finding ways of also writing jokes that don't require that mm-hmm. to give myself breath. Yeah. Um, but I find that I don't think that I'm lying or cheating necessarily, but there's something I don't like about doing something, not because I want to, but because I feel like I have to. Yeah. I, um, but that's the craft. That's how it works, especially for long sets. But Do you, you relate to that at all? Yeah, of course. And you leave room for improv, right? I mean, there's a lot of the stuff that you... Yeah, but even that, like... Th- I really, and maybe we'll get more into this, but I really wanted to go back and talk about this idea of American Idol and the idea of the, the, the stigma or the judgment or the pigeonholed or the assumptions that, that others make about it. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel that that happens with this idea for comedians when they play characters. Not that it's bad, but... Getting pigeonholed a bit? You know, there's... People judge. Uh, I, I I use puppets in my in my act now, yeah. and there's a few reasons I do it. But one of them is this idea of playing with expectation. That is, I just did a podcast with George Lopez. Maybe I'll even cut to a clip. I got into props recently. Puppets. I'm not joking. No. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no. You know what? The, I can't believe that you would put your hand in a puppet. Not knowing where the puppet had been, like that what, material. Wh- why do you think I don't know where my puppet has been? Oh, could, oh, oh so you... I'm in a monogamous relationship <laughs> yeah. with this puppet. A lot of people say, can I see your puppet? I go, so you, you go, could see it. You can't touch it. <laughs> you you put can't your, put your hand in it. No. Because that thing, you'd, you'd be like, listen, man, you fuck my puppet. Yeah, yeah, seriously, you got to get it tested. I don't do that. It's my own puppet. <laughs> but yeah, but there's a judgment for props. And I had it too for a while. Why do you think there's a judgment problem? They think it's e- they think it's easier. It's not easier. It's, it's not easier. The judgment is because it's it's basically saying you can't do it on your own. But I talked about a puppet, mm-hmm. and he laughed in a judgmental way. In a like a, why do people judge it? Why do people judge puppets? I love puppets, the, the, and you don't have to. It's like Sia. You don't have to be the face. Then you just uh, you know have mm-hmm. somebody else do the talking. Uh, Is that kind of your where your head's at with that, I, or your hand? I should say. Good, <laughs> good, uh, uh, <laughs> but. It's not just the puppet. It's the it's the idea of a character. It's playing a character where it, people think it's fake, but kind of like what you you were t- like. To use your phrase, no judgment, uh, Larry the Cable Guy. That's not who he really is. That's a character, and it works for him, and that's great, and that's fine if you are playing a character. But a lot of my bits are these certain energy performance things that it is who I am. It's how I think. It's how I see things. It's a part of you. Sometimes, yeah. But I have to tap into that more than what's organic because that's the job. Uh, uh-huh, uh-huh. So there's this idea of like play. I mean, this is so long winded. No, it's OK. There, I mean, I think that there's there should be room in there, the wiggle room for you to alter these things enough to where it still feels authentic, authentic to you in the moment. I mean, when I'm on stage, too, if there's not if I don't want to portray the same certain kind of I don't know if it's like. Ag- aggression or like I don't know I can change I can flip a switch like I, I don't I don't hold in my mind this like well I guess I do to a certain degree of like hold my mind like they're waiting for that high note but that's not to say you you can't change some stuff in the moment to feel to make it just more real for you but does that mean you don't sing that song or does that mean you sing that song in a different way sing it in a different <clears> way <throat> I haven't figured that out. There's some bits that's like, you can't, you, th- this works because of this. Mm-mm. But maybe that's how you think and maybe others wouldn't. Maybe, but I will say one of the one of the differences between uh, comedy and music is with music, the foundation is whatever you want it to be. Mm. It could be a melody, it could be a lyric, it could be what the lyric means. Yeah. And then you get to tell, it's a story, right? Mm, mm-hmm. And you get to tell it with different dynamics. But with comedy, there are beats that matter. You know, like there is. It's, it's, it's like, it's like the high note. It's the, it's. The, yeah, that's a, that's a very great. Yeah. You know, um, and I totally feel you like sometimes you got to pull it out of your butt. I don't know. But do you ever feel like you can't? Not that you don't want to. Like, I don't, I guess the equivalent would be my voice won't go there today. Yeah. And even then, 
some of those performances people like the most and i'm over here like cringing inside like uh that did not feel the best for me and they're like god i love that that was so raw and there's something that they connected to with that even more where i'm like i mean shoot like i just tried to say shit and shoot because i didn't know if i was allowed it just came out with shoot shoot okay Um, i think if you mix shit and shoot it's still shoot shoot. it sounded like uh like i was irish or something oh okay i was thinking that the Bobby's World accent. Oh, she. Bobby's World. Good. <laughs> um, I don't know. That's how like some of the songs that have done the best for me, I felt like garbage. Or why do you think they like it? Because they feel it was something authentic about it. They- yeah, I feel like it's so raw and stripped. Like literally, the voice and the chords are stripped. That mm. they're just like, oh my god, that was so personalized. That was so intimate. There was something so extremely raw about can't help falling in love or creep and i'm over here like you know um working like a dog and like can hardly get anything out but it's true even in those moments that you bring something new and fresh to the table because you have to interpret it in a different special way because you want people to connect and i guess in 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 my experience um i don't know even more passion comes through um and and more maybe it comes off a little more theatrical even because you're feeling you're wanting to emote things that you maybe you feel like you can't even sing but just comes out differently is there a is there a difference between uh if you're not feeling it right <clears throat> excuse me and you do it anyway, but you find this other thing. Is there ever a time, what's the difference between you're not feeling it and you find a new way of doing it versus you not feeling it and it feeling, because of the space you're in, it feels inauthentic. And that could be because you're not connecting to that story that day and or you mentioned Can't Help Falling in Love and Creep. You probably have sung those songs so many times. Mm-hmm. Where Where's the line or is there one between it would feel inauthentic to do it versus I'll find a way to do it authentically. That's where, you know, it's a choice. And I feel like that's where I have to go a bit inward and remind myself why I'm doing it. Like I, I'm like a, I'm, I could get a little deep in my head, you know, and I think a lot, I'm a could you Virgo. Give some examples of, what, you deep know, in your head? like, yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll just, just have all of these introspective thoughts, like, you know, like exactly what you just said. Like I could be thinking like, is this authentic to me? Like, am I just, you know, whatever it is, I, but I'll go inward a bit and then just re-remind myself like who I am, why I'm doing it, why I love a song in the first place. Little blank, you know, blinks. What are those answers? Um, well. Who are you? Why are you doing this in the first place? (laughs) Um, this is like this is who I am. Like like doing the performing that aspect of it. Um, like there's no way. I guess I live my life under the, you know, understanding with myself. I have my own agreement where I can't do anything inauthentic. That's why I'm here. That's why I'm not signed with a major label and all the labels that tried to. It's why. I'm not selling my soul. It's why I'm doing the music I am. And it's why it's taking me slower to climb the ladder that some have just taken an escalator to. Um, I've made that peace and that decision within myself. So if I was ever any kind of glimpse of like, what's going on? Why does this feel a little weird? I just like come, come to and, I'm, and I re- reroute myself basically and just like, yo, this is what you love. This is who you are. These are the songs you like. Like nobody's doing, making you do this, but you, baby. That's it. Do you ever not like that song anymore because you've done it so much? Sure, sure. And there's those times, or it could even be the the audience, like like having them sit, you know, because it's a beautiful theater, and those people aren't as interactive when you're used to playing like crazy, you know. Oh, it, so you're saying when people are sitting, it it would it's distracting. Sometimes it, I've let it go, but in um earlier on in my experience it's just been interesting because i feel like i would have to sing at them sometimes because i'm like give me more because it's such a like interactive experience so when you're playing anything from a a you know 
grungy like uh, rock and roll club to an arena, all those people are giving you what you what you want back, and we're just feeding off of each other. And then you go to these prestigious, beautiful theaters, and people are sitting down and don't know if it's okay to clap mm. or you know holler in between. And um, I had to get over that. But I'm just saying, like, there's all of those kinds of like different interesting things that that um, sway you sometimes, or or just make you um, you just gotta shake it off. Uh, when you're doing Broadway, you'll probably be doing a lot more of that people sitting watching. <laughs> and I'll be in their face like, Let that. <laughs> you said that you were slow to climb a ladder while others took an escalator, but because of choices you made for authenticity, mm. implying that if you took the escalator, it would be inauthentic. How is that the case? Um, I mean that literally, I, I, I believe you. I just, what does that mean? Yeah. I mean, I've, I've, um, come to many a crossroads in my career already. Um, and I've made some really big decisions and um, turned a lot of deals down um, because my intuition told me this is not um, this is not going to be beneficial for you. Um, and for me, I think that the journey, the process is something to, you know, soak up like I'm not in this to just flip a switch and, um, you know, be a TikTok star and then just like get my money and then stop doing what I love. Like I'm trying to do this for the rest of my life and in such a way that makes me feel um, like I deserve the, the you know, rewards that I receive. What, does, what deal or type of deal have you turned down because your instincts told you and did your instincts tell you that based on those people or stories that you've heard in the past? No, it could even be like certain, you know, a lot of labels. Um, you know, I had a lot of deals on the table multiple times of, with people I thought I really wanted to be with. Um, you know, the fine print tells you otherwise. Um, I'm hip to that stuff. You mean that literally? Like yeah. <laughs> part, part of what locks you in? Yeah, yeah. What, I mean, would, what, would, what would, how would it handicap you? Uh, well... I mean, without getting too specific, because I'd rather not, it's, it's, you know, if you are the type of artist that wants to be in creative control and then reap the rewards and, and you know, be able to sustain and, and ha like, own things and be able to make a living off of it without feeling like you're, you know, um, under somebody else's control, um, you just, like... I'm that person. Like, I need to be in control, like full control. What What would be the benefits of going with a label? Those are the, the downsides. Because how do you not... And I've asked a couple of artists this question or something like this, and I've never gotten an explanation. And it's usually because they don't know. Um, and a couple of these people are people that have gone with the big labels. Um, and I have too. And I've learned a lot of great lessons. Yes, yeah, so or like, please, what, what does that mean? Like... If you go, I understand not owning your masters. I, I understand that part. But what, what could you not do? Like if you say, all right, yeah, I get it. Here's some of the things that are the rules and I won't, you know, blah, blah, blah. But I need to be able to do whatever I want music. Like they, they say no, they're going to control the type of music you could. Don't they want you because of the type of music you do? I mean, you'd think it, it's all again, like I can't speak for an, an, a full generality because everybody and every label and time is changing, too. So I've heard of great deals lately that I was not, you know, right. um, uh, propped up with about four years ago, let's say um, the times are changing like crazy, crazy fast. But please give me an example of, of, of a fine print thing. <laughs> Be as generic as you want, but something where you're like, oh, no, this would get in the way of me as an artist. Um, you know, like, let's say there was a song on the, fr my first record that everybody loved and it was like very Adele, like, and I hated it. And okay. I was like, no, that's not what we were going to do. Let's put out this other one. That's more in the, of like an Amy Winehouse realm horns and like more soulful, more of me. And, um, you know, it was a fight and I'm just like, but for what to put it on the album? To put it as the single, and it it was like oh, the you can't very... choose which one is the single. No, yeah, I mean, 
yeah, that would, that would be my second single. The first single, I couldn't, I didn't even get to release one that I wrote because they didn't even want to give, have enough faith in you to put out something that the artist wrote. And a single, I mean... The first and second single can like really prop you up nicely. I mean, it's a huge... How do you define what a single is? A song that they're really putting out there on the radio to, to it's yeah, like the do, face of the album, right? Yes, and like, you know, if it does well, it, it is a radio hit. You do the radio tour, you go on tour. Like, it's all these... Um, things that are created based on the initial, um, you know, release like that. Would there be any benefits? Uh, also, there'd be some cons. Also, pro is to benefit as con is to what? How would I, does that make sense? How would I have said that? Um, here are the benefits, here are the challenges maybe? Sure. What would the uh, challenges aside, what would some of the benefits be if you did go with a label? Um, money for radio, um, hopefully a, a in-house PR and marketing team that can actually, you know, do their job. So it's basically marketing. Yeah. And hey, and that's not to say like, I could still end up getting w- with one eventually if, if, if it actually felt right. Mm-hmm. It's just that I've created my own Reinhardt Records and I've been putting out my stuff through that because, um, you know, I, I can, uh. I can keep my promises <laughs> for myself. And, you know, I'm just, it'd be great to find those people that can actually yeah. like really own up to the, the kind of promises and things that they're coming out with. Um, but, you know, I'm not trying to harp, like more so than like throwing them under the, you know, them rug who, uh, labels. I'd, I'd rather just say to people that like, you can do it on your own if you wish to, if you are the kind of person that it wants full responsibility and control creatively and just knowing where everything goes, then you can do it on your own. You like can. my podcast and Tyso Productions. <laughs> yeah. It's the world we live in. Like we're in a really sweet spot to actually ha- at least have all these outlets to enable us to, to do, to be our own, you know, empire if we wish. Um, how are you feeling? Because I have a couple more questions about this, but I also yeah. always miss my dismount and can't tell. Do you have a, a little bit more with me? Yeah. Okay. I got all day. I'll be here all week. Okay. Right on this couch. Well, then uh, here we go. (laughs) Part two. (laughs) You had mentioned, uh, and I'm going to take this as a kind of a microcosm of what the outlets are, not specifically TikTok. But when you mentioned that and you don't want to have to. Sorry. I understand. But I I feel that, that TikTok has the same. In an, the negative side, the uh, perception of it has the same kind of stigma that you were talking about American Idol has, which is being pigeonheld into a platform of media. Oh, she's the American Idol girl. She's a TikTok girl, the whatever. Totally. And though I believe that as a reality of, of, of people's perception, I really think that's a huge projection from the, the, the creative on their side to choose not to do it. And what I mean by that is... Not doing something because is just as, is a choice built on fear just as much as, um, you're saying as opposed to going for it, like, like psyching yourself out to not yeah Well, to not do it because blank. Oh yeah. That, that is the same thing as the blank itself. I agree. So what's wrong with. It then what's wrong with going out there as Which a one? tiktok person oh like, what was your point on that no i guess um i guess for me i just i haven't fully grasped it yet because there's so much to uncover and the people that are out there being super original that's wonderful but kind of piggybacking off of that thing that you the post that you put up kind of recently about people taking other people's memes like this app is like created for people to copy each other and like i don't kind of like i don't love that either uh yeah, the point I don't of re- mine that was, doesn't resonate with me that part of it. my point of it was less about people copying which unoriginality has been around as long as uh toasters and oven mitts which is a <laughs> saying that that i got from a buddy of mine um you didn't make that one up no i made it up but i wanted to credit Sound somebody like for the pun. thank you but my issue was the credit my issue was people taking stuff and not <laughs> saying this is this person's thing. Sure. Most of my friends are comedians. Mm-hmm. And a lot of us now 
have some similar things. Mm -hmm. Who did it first? I'm very sensitive to this stuff. And I'm not perfect. I don't know. But I do know. Oh, this is a thing that I do that I kind of got from this person. Or sometimes we don't know. But. I think you know. I'll, I'll tell you something. I really will tell you something. I, I believe that you don't. I believe that people don't. That's not to say it's okay. Yeah. But we're all. As, we're, I guess it depends on how aware you are as a person. How aware you are as a person. But also. I Hey, I also believe like, you know, didn't something happen with the light bulb? Somebody created it on the opposite side of the world I, in the no, same that's day? That's something I don't want to get into on this show. I get a lot of shit from from people that love Edison and I talk about oh, listen I don't I even like, care all I'm saying I'm is joking. I just feel like that that could be real I, when you come across this as a comedian especially when you are around people that you know have seen you mm. and they're similar stuff um, more so like if I want like there are some times where you want to tell a comedian hey I want you to know that I do something similar here's what I do not to tell them to stop doing it necessarily, but to let them know in case they see you, mm -hmm. they don't think that you took it. Right. And then there's sometimes like, well, you don't, I see somebody do something similar to me. What am I, what do I have to gain from this? And I don't have an answer. I mean, I might have a lot to gain from it, but it is an uncomfortable thing. And I have, and everybody says it's, it's flattering. It should be flattering. And it's like, oh, yeah, no, it's to not. an extent, it's not flattering <laughs> when people, that's why I made that post. And I was shocked at how polarizing the comments were of some people wow. like, oh, I know, I know. And some people like, who gives a shit? That's what the internet is. Why Nobody cares. And it's right. like, some people aren't sensitive to intellectual property, in which case it doesn't matter. Some people don't experience that in their lives. I mean, you can have friendisms, I guess, where you pick up things from each other, yeah. but that could be more flattering than like, actually like your, your livelihood of performing and having somebody strip, yeah. you know, take something and then do it on the a same reality show and get praised for it. What, you know, Does that just, happen to everybody? I don't know. Probably, it, well, I don't know. I think the problem to comes from that maybe you and I could relate to is that, uh, and I apologize if um, this sounds insulting, no. but there are a lot of people bigger than us. Right, we're in a place where they could get away with it. <laughs> yeah, to where, uh, and I've, in a similar way, although, and I thought about not talking about it, and I have talked about it at least once, but not that much, and I want to talk about it every episode, mm. is I've started doing this stuff on my podcast that is, uh, I didn't invent anything, but I nobody was doing this on podcasts, and I'm seeing some other podcasts doing s some things. You're being authentic. I'm also doing something that's very specific to me. Yeah. And then I'm seeing people who follow me, who had maybe been following me not that long, doing things also two weeks after it comes out. Mm -hmm. That is once one thing I'd be like, uh, but even that, multiple times that are so specific. Yeah. And it bothered me for a bit. It bothered me for a bit until um, I had a conversation with somebody who I kind of look up to and explained for right or wrong, it made me feel good about myself. You are, you have more to offer than this specific, than you have more to offer than this one arrangement. Sure. Right. And all these things. And, and if you're you, inspiring to others, which is, you who know. cares? Who gives a shit? At the end mm -hmm. of the day. I mean, also, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm cutting <laughs> you off. I didn't mean that. No, it's okay. I, I'm, I'm sorry. Let me. I'm feeling vent, passionate vent, about this. Vent, baby, vent. <laughs> there's a truth to that, but also there's like a selfishness that I don't want to pretend is a bad thing. No, of like I, this I is hear mine. You. It's it's one of those things though that you talk about behind the curtain. Yeah. Okay. But I don't feel shame <laughs> in feeling this way though. Yeah. And and I I'm not bothered the way I used to be about it. But Same. there's one thing that does bother me when it happens, and it mm -hmm. happens once every six weeks maybe mm. is when I start getting comments saying that I'm ripping off oh, yeah. those pe these people. Oh, that's fun. Where I want to be like, let me show you some fucking timestamps, bro. <laughs> exactly. That I haven't figured out <laughs> the I tools have the for yet. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I, I just I connect to that. I feel your pain. I, I do. I, that resonates for sure. For shizzle. 
But there is something that that conversation made me feel good that I'm sure you already know about yourself, but it's the truth, which is it's not that arrangement that makes you special. It's that you are able to do it. That's one of the things. You know, mm-hmm. like it's not the it's not the words, it's it's your vocabulary and your perspective and you're able to do those things. And that's nice. And and again, like I mean, I believe in just I, we. This word is like the theme of the, the thing, authentic. But like, if you're coming from that place, doing it from that you know a rooted place, then it's just I don't know. That's gonna live on. And karma's real. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we'll take out anything you want, and I'm feeling myself <laughs> feeling that thing you were feeling about. Maybe you shouldn't, but yeah, I don't like. <laughs> speaking of authenticity, I don't like not doing something based off of how I feel it might be perceived if that thing I'm saying and doing is honest. And that's helped me a lot in this podcast where there was a while with this where there were some episodes I didn't want to put out or parts I didn't want to show. Mm. And by trying to control that along with everything else, I just realized it would be unsustainable. And this is a part of me. I am somebody who recognizes this thing makes me feel bad. So I talk about it. I mean, doesn't it make you feel once again like you're in a Seinfeld episode? Like that's what that's the place where I go when these kind of things happen because like that's that the comedy in me like has to come out in those moments so that I don't get, you know, sulk about it. So you feel the things that bother you need to come out in a comedic way. Yeah, I do, I have to laugh them off and make light of it in a like very like oh, it's satirical manner yeah. and um yeah, and it helps get me through it because it's like it's hilarious. A- after so many times of these kinds of things that happen on a daily basis, it seems it's just like it's kind of too funny. You gotta laugh a little bit at yourself and the whole situation. Do you uh, ever see people performing? Like comedians do a lot of shows in LA where there's multiple comedians on the venue on the bill, mm-hmm. um, as opposed to just a it's my show or it's your show. In LA, do you do a lot of shows where you're performing with a lot of other people or no? Not really, unless it's something like a hotel cafe where it's just more that family vibe or I jump up on there with a friend like Casey or somebody. Um, I mean, you know, I've played all of these places over time, but I, I more so tour outside than I do um, play in LA. All right. Because this was a two-part question, but based on that, it's a one-part question. Okay. I was aggressive to you when I said, who gives a shit, when you said, talked about like... Inspiring? Yeah. Um, and I meant the who gives a shit a good amount, but I also understand and like that. For my version of it, it's nice to be able to make people feel good. Yeah. I'm always playing devil's advocate with myself or just looking, trying to look for the light, I should say, is better than the other but the truth of it as a performer mm-hmm. and I'll speak for myself tell me where you were late I like to, I like to give people laughs and make them feel good mm-hmm. I love to laugh love to laugh and I love to be around people who make me laugh yeah I also love to be able to do that and I don't mean be able to do that like oh I'm able to give you something I like that I have this craft this talent this thing that I've been working for it makes me feel special mm-hmm. there's a selfishness to that which I've talked about before, I think selfish has bad PR and people think it's such a bad thing, but I want to feel good about who I am and what I do. Yeah. Do you ever feel competitive? I'm not talking about necessarily people who do something that might be similar. Just as an artist, do you ever feel like you're doing, you might be making choices that are authentic, but part of the inspiration is to stand out, to be different, to be special? I mean, that's kind of my whole, what is it, MO? Like, I, I feel like I that T-Pain video that just came out recently where he was like, do something original. Mm-hmm. Do something else. So, and it's like, Great that video. spoke to me so much. And it's just yeah. like, guys, like, honestly, if you want a long-term career, you got to pull it from somewhere inside. You can't pull it out of somebody else's garden. It's just not going to work. But original It is- will, and maybe it'll get you, again, somewhere quicker. Faster, but I think in the long run, it's, you know, I don't know. I, I, I just like, I can't harp on anything like more than originality. Like I'm. But original doesn't mean unique. And I mean, right, and we're all inspired by a million things. So it's nothing is like, you and know, there's only so many chord progressions and there's only so <laughs> many stories. There's only so many jokes. Sure. And, but it is in the way that you do them, the way 
Do you go. ever feel like you're doing something to stand out? Right. Which is almost Yeah, I want it to be different. I, I don't I don't inhibit myself from thinking like here, I okay, I I'd rather be on that side than thinking I need to fit into this formula so that I can get played on the hottest pop radio station. But I, I I mean like are there ever times that there's something that does feel honest to you, but you feel like, yeah, but this has been done, so you don't do it. Oh. Yeah, I mean, I've written plenty of songs that I could have like released, but I'm like, eh, too poppy or too like too over that, that's, done. That's where I'm at right now with that. Me realizing how much I have cannibalized <laughs> things that I could have done well. I think. I mean, if I did it well, well, but like by design. I mean, things that were good mm -hmm. that I chose not to. Because, oh, I've seen this before. This isn't special, blah, blah, blah. And Do you regret that? I don't regret it. Um, it's, I, I say this sometimes and I get comments of people saying it takes them out of it, but I have to. Is this conversation okay? Because I'm in and I could sometimes yeah. be like. I feel I'm like we're in a up. portal. Yeah. There's nothing else around. Do you want to lay on the couch? <laughs> I'm kind of doing that at the moment. I can step into the therapist. <laughs> this is a focus issue. Um, I just want to make sure because I'll yeah. be missing the signs of Rick, relax. But That's okay. a big part of where I am right now is I'm going to put what we do in the same thing, right? We're performers who are expressing ourselves through art, right? Mm -hmm. and, and I'm going to say it without irony and as corny as people say it's art what we're doing is art i'm not saying it's good i'm not saying it's bad i'm saying looking at what we do as an expression and as art right here's that mm -hmm. here's who we are but then there's the craft of it right and we want to go from who we are to the art and that's the raw the voice cracks or going on stage and you don't have your beats and that's great and a very important part of expressing yourself and as a performer to be present but there is, like it or not, this craft that we have been working on, conscious or otherwise, that is the, it would be the job of art, right? Like, you don't want to show up, but you have to. You don't want to do these transitions. You don't want to do, talk about this thing, but it serves a purpose. Mm. It's being a writer, mm -hmm, you know? Mm -hmm. And I have had, and I didn't realize this, I have had a judgment of that for a while. It's what made me start using puppets. Mm -hmm. um, not specifically, but it's that same mindset of like, I'm not going to do that because, similar to what we were talking about with like, I'm not going to go on TikTok because. And what I don't like... I am on TikTok, yes. Shout out to TikTok here. But the idea of it, I'm saying, of like <laughs> wanting to be known as this thing. And, and, and I'm just... Puppets, I, puppets. No, I know where I'm at. I'm just, <laughs> I'm getting very self-conscious of just like, let her talk. No, no. Uh, to not do something... Because I'm as just as negative as to do something unique because it's unique. Mm. It's all, I feel it's a bit manipulative to say, like, look at how great I am to myself. Like, look at look at what I do. Nobody's being unique isn't enough. I remember I used to get, I still do sometimes, and they're, they're meant it as compliments, but I've gotten compliments from people about how unique I am. Mm-hmm. And I start, this realization was not that they're saying it in a bad way, but I started to take it as an insult because mm -hmm. I don't want my, you, my standout quality to be the fact that I'm doing something nobody, I could go on stage and take a dump on the floor mm -hmm. and nobody else has done that before, but that doesn't make it good. And mm -hmm. I, that's when I realized I was chasing being special, not because that's but all of But special and unique are one and the same. And not, have, nobody's going to like everything. Like, that's like when you really start to not give a shit. Because it's like, there's always going to be the, the trolls and the people that don't see your art for what you see it as or your main, your big fans see it as. And it's like, you know, that's it's from the get-go. That's why I was like, why on earth would I try to be anything other than what I feel in that moment? But that's what I'm saying. That I agree. But it's a little narrow-minded, speaking for myself, yeah. that this is who I am to go down this way. But if you open it up, I am also, you are also those songs that were too poppy. Mm 
Right. Or those things that you feel put you in a category. You got to make a choice, though. I don't like the choice. I don't like that I was making choices to not do something to mm. control that. Oh, then then I would be then I would be compared to this person. Mm. Does that make sense? No, it totally does. I guess in in my own experience, it's like I have so many different like and like you know alter egos, if you will, or whatnot. That I know for myself, I need to kind of. Um, curate yeah and and just like get a little lasso over some of these things to to be able to at least um create my own niche um but not like let you know not spread myself too thin either you know it's like by what doing too many genres are you basically saying developing a brand yes exactly you know like i i want to like doing jazz and those things is such a, a cool alter ego that's important to me what's not as important to me is doing a song that I wrote that I wish Ariana Grande would take. Like, just because I think that that would have been more popular, that the, I, I can't allow myself to just do it based on that. But could you allow yourself to not do it because it, it would be more popular? Um, I think they're like one and the same. I guess it's just because at the end of the day, just because I can do it doesn't mean that I should and that it's my, like, what... You know, well, then why'd you record the song to begin with? Why'd you write those lyrics to begin with? Were you well, feeling them in that moment? Well, in this specific case, I've written a lot of songs at camps that are supposed to have A&Rs give, like, like spread out to other people. And in those moments, you can get a little bit confused because you're like, damn, that's a good song. That could be a hit. And at the same time, it's like, not for me, though. Like, it's not Yeah, for but it wouldn't me. be for you. It would be for Ariana. That would be great. But it would be for Ariana... Ariana yeah, er, Ariana Grande. Ariana Grande. Yeah. So it wouldn't be for you. No, right. It would. That would be wonderful. But what I'm saying is it can get a tad confusing because it's still a piece of you having written it and feeling it and knowing like you made those chords, you made that story. Like there's still a piece of me in that. But I will say when I go into those camps and things, I do make a conscious choice to separate myself because of that exact reason like i don't want to have full attachment to something that i know is not me fully genre-esque and right whatever else so it's like i don't know if if you kind of go into certain situations um with that understanding with yourself i think it becomes easier to uh, make decisions maybe uh, that makes sense and i think i'm seeing it being a little bit more different because it's a different yours is a different situation i think because you're talking about a brand as an artist yeah and i'm thinking about an hour yeah an isolated basically one album is different than my collection Mm -hmm. and i don't think about a collection probably because i don't have an album yet and i haven't you know been trying to but like That idea of jazz, pop, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. Don't know any other genres. Uh, Soul, rock. I'm the opposite, where I do have jazz, pop, soul, rock. Uh, And I have been not doing pop. I mean, you know, whatever the analogy would be. I have been not doing... One of them. Because so many other people do that. And to me, what what I'm saying I've been realizing is to not do it because other people do it is is the op- is 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 the opposite of what I'm trying to do. I am now changing who I am mm-hmm. or more specifically ch- um changing uh, the the colors of, I'm limiting the amount of paint um, that I could paint sure. with. Sure. It's like people not liking the Beatles because everybody likes the Beatles. Yes. How dare you? Yeah. You're missing out. Yeah. And that's a if, cop out. If you don't like their music for some reason, whatever. Then you suck. Sure. But also there are some people <laughs> See that See you later. There are some people that that just don't like this color. I, let's not use the Beatles because that's a, know, a you know, know, it's a primary color. But there are some people that that don't like stuff. Um so what I what I've been working on is being able to do those things without judgment. And yeah. what I found is I didn't realize how judgment like how much of my choices are based on judgment. That got in my own way. Onto yourself, yeah. Onto the the color. Uh huh. You know, like the. 
or the clay that I'm playing with or whatever. Yeah. Anyway, I'm, it's too much, too much. I get it. I get where you're at. And it, yeah, it's like... <sighs> it's made me feel Cut good. Cut that red tape. Just keep... just just Or blue tape. Or blue. Do it all. Just do it all. Like there's, n- there's no reason why you should inhibit yourself in any way, shape or form. I don't believe in those boxes. Uh, and I feel like I've... Um, I've spent over a decade strengthening certain muscles that yeah. are strong, and now I've introduced these new things that are a bit weaker. Sure. And I'm just like, oh, that's... And I'm curious how much of that has been in my real life, not just the art of it. Yeah. Like how many things we don't do. Sure. I mean, and, and for me, like going back to an album, I've written tunes that I've waited four albums later, eight years later, and now it feels right. It's like everything has its place in time. And just because you felt that way before and now you're open-minded to it doesn't make it any less valid. You know, yeah. like that that was a time where you needed to feel that way. And now you're even more prepared because you've strengthened these different muscles to do it all. Like, it, you know, everything in its time, right time. Yeah, I guess the positive way of looking at that is uh, evolving and adapting, not necessarily for the better, but at least th- so it's different. Yeah. And as you keep putting stuff out it continues to grow in different ways yeah uh before i forget uh, i do want to talk about uh your uh something you probably talked about a whole bunch but the can't help falling in love arrangement that you did that was on that gum commercial extra Mm -hmm. was it extra yeah um i heard it and and in not even a second i knew it was you i already knew you though but i knew it was you not even in like a second later that's cool and uh I downloaded it right away. And that was a commercial mm. that you were not in visually. I have to imagine that helped, that did something for you, right? Yeah, a what? lot. Um, I mean, this man just envisioned this coming together. He was from Chicago as well, like the ad agency, and they hit me up. Did they hear the song first or did you write it for that? No, no. It, they just, he had this specific request and vision in mind for me to sing that song for this commercial. So the, the ad was in place, but they didn't have what the singer that they wanted yet. And he was, was sent out to find who it should be. And he thought it would be me. And I remember like, I think just had a like party central the night before. And I got this call. Quadruple threat. Yeah. And I was with Casey actually in his like minivan rolling around Hollywood probably. And um, they were like the people from, you know, Extra Team or BBDO, the ad agency. They were like, can you come in tomorrow and record this? And I was like, oh, tomorrow. Okay. And I was like, did you have the arrangement yet? Pretty shot. Uh, No. And they're like, "Uh, can you find a piano player? And I was like, okay. Yeah. And I never, you know, like an opportunity comes, it's for a reason in my book. I'm going to totally do anything in in my, you know, anything possible to make it happen. So I got off the phone. I was like, man, I have to find a piano player. He's like, oh, what time do we start? You know, Casey was just like in. Oh, he played the piano on it? Yeah. Cool. So I was like, okay, cool. So we, we, I think we were at this studio in uh, Venice. Um, And uh, yeah, it was just a very organic experience. Like, they, we, you know, all I knew was the Elvis version that I'd grow up, grown up hearing my mom and my aunts sing around the piano. And like, it, it's already a very like intimate kind of feeling for me, this song, um, and a sentimental one. And, um, so I kind of was still singing it more like Elvis though. And just like having more of a rhythm to it, I guess. And they were like, Oh, can you just make it more intimate? I was like, well, and now is this an ad agency or is this a, a, a range musical arranger that works for the ad agency? No, it's just somebody that worked at the ad agency right. who's amazing and had a vision. And he's like, can we just make it more, you know, intimate and, and such? And I said, well, can I see the ad? Like that would really help me. Oh, they had it recorded. It, they had the, the visual. Right. Yeah. The whole, vi- the commercial was recorded. So I just watched it and I cried and I was like, oh, I get it now. Like, you need it to be like... Remind I'm, me what it was. It was collecting the gum wrappers, yeah, right? And, and, it was and then saving them up to tell something? A couple's complete evolution from childhood or high school through the rough times of their relationship. And finally, they make it to an art gallery and um, and there's one of the, the 
you know, whenever she was sad or they were going through it, like he'd, or in happy times, he would just draw them together on like a wrapper. Mm -hmm. So the wrappers were cute and they'd eat the gum. And, um, and it just showed all the steps of their, of their relationship. And finally, you know, it's, there's one of them inside the art gallery and then she turns around and he's like proposing to her. It's the same picture (laughs) as on the gum wrapper. So cute. Right. And, um, yeah, it's a tearjerker. Like it made a lot of men cry, like a lot of just everyone, like everybody could relate to it in their own special way. And, um, I cried and I was like, okay, now I know I need to like say this as if, as if I'm whispering it to my partner, you know, like this, this is intimate. So then we just approach it with a whole different, you know, light. And, um, and it was, it, I mean, we just did a couple takes and then we just took one whole take. Like, that's the thing is like, there's so many things on like my records where I can nitpick and I'm doing a lot better job of like putting the paintbrush down, as I like to say, to mm-hmm. like, just not, not um, fine Control. tune everything. You don't want anything to be cookie cutter anyway. So this is a prime example of literally, it was just like, not even like fully, I don't know, mixed even. I feel it was just very raw and just a one take. And, you know, it turned out to organically get pl- played on the radio, which doesn't happen often anymore. Now, how does that happen? Does the ad agency own part of this, too? How does that work? Uh, no, no. It's yours? Yeah, it's me and my publishing company, so they... Right on Records? Or is that a different thing? No, it's a different one. Gotcha. Um, but they... Uh, it doesn't happen. So it just... It got picked up to radio yeah, through wild. Shazam's from a commercial. and, like... And then the labels all hit me up and then, you know, I hired my own independent radio team in tune and we like, then we like really got, um, what I wanted and it it lasted on the charts for weeks and weeks and weeks, like 18 weeks or something like that. Oh, you actually, so you made money from this outside of. And it brought me up to tour and and play really like bigger venues. Because of that song. yeah, Yeah. Wild. And it played for. I think on the on TV for five years and it became like the quintessential like ad that they would show to other ad agencies. Like I'd have people calling me saying they're playing your commercial and telling us how an ad should look and sound and the marriage between the sound and the the audio and the visual. And we got a Clio for it. Like it really, wow. I had no idea that this was going to happen and nothing, nothing like this. Amazing how much uh, of you and your homage had uh elvis be a big part of their life yeah and uh, the day after i filmed that or the night i the the night that i filmed the the um video that that went to this because we also did like a music video i went to a party and priscilla presley was there and i got to tell her and i thought that was you know Mm -hmm. my whole life everything is just little signs just trickling everywhere and you just got to be wide-eyed to to capture them and see that they're just screaming at you you know so i was like okay, well, I'm definitely going to have to tell her that I've been channeling her, you know, late uh, LV all day long. And, you know, I hope that you, you know, appreciate this recording. And I did it with the utmost love and respect for you and your family. It was a cool thing because it, it, it even helped, I don't know, tie it with a nice bow. You know what I mean? And make it that much more um, meaningful, all of it. It was pretty cool. Do you, when you tour, play that song now because people know you with that song? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been um, it's been crazy, and I, you know, it's kind of been uh, it's it's like one of the main wedding songs of the last five years, and it's funny because I always had dreamt and wanted to have a song, not that I wrote it, but at least the recording version. Um, that that people yeah. would would get married to and and just you know be in a in a place of of love um and it's it's really cool i get videos all the time and it's it's oh, nice people to, from their wedding with that song being yeah, played yeah yeah and if it's worth it enough i'll play it you know if it's, <laughs> if it's in italy or oh I, Arts. oh you're saying to have you come sing it at the wedding i don't a lot but if it's worth it then i do worth it based on the bag sure Where's the first you traveled to do it? <laughs> um, maybe uh, St. Bart's or um, me on the Caribbean. Or, yeah, That's where they hit Italy. you up and like, come, is it just that one song? Yeah, sometimes. You go to do a, you've, you've traveled to do a song? Yeah. Whoa. Yeah, it's cool. And it's just nice to like be a part of that. Like 
sometimes I'll get like cameos lately, like of like sing a couple lines of it and I'm about to propose to my person. I'm like, this is crazy. Like it's a it's a huge honor. I love to be a part of something so special and like just heartwarming, you know? It sounds so cheesy, but I mean it. <laughs> No, that's cool, and but I'm. It's. I mean, you're not going to be the 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 wedding singer. The wedding you're singer. doing. It would be like going to do a corporate gig to do a three minute joke. Yes. Good for you. Thanks. Uh, well, that's it. But <laughs> but I got to ask you, and also it's, I don't know what I even be allowed to post. I'd like to put you on the spot. Yeah. Can I put you on the spot? More than you already have. I'm just kidding. Go ahead. A little bit more. Um, (laughs) Your eyes are scaring me. (laughs) I want you to sing something. Like it's an audition for for Take Your Shoes Off play. Oh my God. But that's a weird request. But also, I want you to sing that song, but you can't because YouTube will flag it in a second. Really? I have a friend. If uh, you're performing something a cappella, they flag it? I don't know, but I have a musician friend uh, who just did something um played something multiple songs by the way his own arrangements it's with guitar and singing mm. and i mean big songs none of them were flagged except for one which was his own song because it's all his of voice mine get flagged all of, i still have to go through my youtube videos and like send in like claims like dispute do you win them the, i i just did it for like the first time i just noticed i have like Dozens of videos that are, have claims, but uh, right away they're like, "Oh, okay, fine." But right it, away, yeah, because it takes me or like a couple of days, maybe, but like a month plus, and that's when you get most of views are in that first month. Well, and my biggest question, and I'm scared to know the answer, is: Do you still get like you know the right um, whatever? Like, can you receive like from what those views were? Like, no. Really? No, they, they say that they're in escrow, but I've never gotten it back. I mean, I can't have four pennies. I can only have two. <laughs> well, were ads even on your things? Yeah. Also, this is the, the back end where we're talking about YouTube ads. But yeah. um, I mean, I think you're maybe supposed to, but it's that's why you got to get it like right away. Yeah. Golly gee. Well. Um, but either way. I, uh, and there are some episodes where I've said, I, I, this is going to be a musical episode. I'm just not going to make any money off of it. And that's fine. But like, you know that going in. So I wa- <laughs> will you see, can we see if it's flagged? I mean, you could see. I'm like, gonna, I mean, it I'm going to probably get watery they, eyed. I would only do like a couple lines. They won't flag that. Here's what we'll do. What? Could you do it where you're kind of singing it through a dry, through a menu where you... Do it like this. You know what I mean? Um, no, don't do, do that. Do it where I spin on my head? No, where it's like you, there's pausing so it doesn't go. Let me hear it for a second and I'll upload it. And if it's flagged, then I'll... You know what I might do? I might. Do I haven't bass. warmed up today. We don't even know what's about to come out. Oop. We might not want to put it up. That's right. Oop. Oh, you know what we could do? Oop. There was a moment that we cut to that was hilarious. You already saw it. It was something that I don't remember what it was. But you were... Remember there's something that we were going to have you... Elaine. Yeah, but what was it? It was... I don't know. There wasn't... You said you were going to remember. Well, no. I remembered that I, you wanted me to stand there and do some kind of bit. <sighs> I know. That's, and it was going to... But we didn't I have am. the bit. We didn't have the bit. It, it was just It was just in thin air. That should be the name of this podcast. Couldn't find the bit. <laughs> um, I know what we're going to do. We are going to... Uh, and I don't know if this is still even in at this point. Do that. And then when we cut to it, we'll, we'll show a, just a few seconds of that. Mm-hmm. So it's not too long. But then okay. also at the end. I'll just think of something funny that happened to me and talk about it. We got to play with this ending. I got to figure this out. <laughs> we're going to end this. Then we're going to do a quick little thing. Um, okay. But uh, I don't know where this end is unless this is the end. In which case, thanks for coming over. This is the end. Da, 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 da. Or if we take part Scoop of this out, uh, I just need to come up with some organic ending with you. Uh, so here's what it'll be. Scoop D. Oh. That was already it. We're done if we kept everything. If we take out the back few minutes and we're doing a new ending, I want to do it to where uh, the audience knows that we cut something out mm. and here's the recovery. 
So keep this part in. Basically, maybe you do a bars and tone or something. Keep this part in. All right, I need to come up with oh, an ending. No. I hate that. What happened? Do you have something on you? Just like lip gloss shit. Had I known, I would. I didn't. I don't know if it shows. I don't know. Hopefully not. I pride myself in the in a person who says if somebody has a booger or something wrong. I do wrong. too. I'm that friend. People think it's rude. I mean, wouldn't it be rude to not? Ten out of ten times. Like, okay, you want that little bug on your face all day? Fine. They think it's more important that they don't feel uncomfortable than their friend walks around town with a booger. I mean, shoot, I even do it on the down low. I try to just like, you know, to like, wait, do I got some? No, I was doing it on the down low. <laughs> Sometimes when you're trying to down low, tell somebody of the booger. And then it, it looks, makes it even worse. And it makes like, it look what? like they're doing what? coke. Oh, or that. Yeah. Are you trying to offer me coke? How dare you? No. And then you are now afraid that people think you're a drug dealer. So you go, no, 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 no. She just had a booger. <laughs> all right. That'll be our and end. this is a Seinfeld episode. Here we go. Scoot doo. Do. Title cards. Blabbity blue. Scoop D. Oh, yeah. <laughs>